Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. Today it's something a little different. We're going to go van life, we're going to go art, painting, plein air. Did I cover it all? Probably. So let's roll the intro, let's see what happens. Hi everybody, welcome back. Now, as I said just now, it is a lovely day out there. It really is stonking. It's really warm, there's no wind, and I felt that it'd be fantastic to get the van sorted out, get my kit sorted out and clear off somewhere and enjoy your company as I do a plein air adventure. I'm not quite sure where I wanna go yet. I have got to go into my gallery on the way through to pick up a tripod, but other than that, I'm ready to go. Now, the car or the van is not totally set up as if i were camping but it has certainly got enough supplies in it that's essential and my painting apparatus and everything i need to go out and do a plan there so i'm going to get going without further ado and uh, yeah let's see how we get on Hi everybody, welcome back. Well, I've been mooching around the Romney Marshes way too long this morning, trying to decide where to stop and where to paint. And uh, I've looked at all my normal haunts and I think, mm, could I do better, what have you. And it's probably a classic case of not having enough of a plan. And um, so that's only myself to blame for that. But the thing is, I've actually come to a place where I've painted many times in the past, which is Aldergate Lane, which is a normally paint up by the bottom of the hill there along the main river. But this, I uh, will show you in a minute, is a little tributary, a uh, little ditch that's been cut and, and um, irrigation. And uh, it makes for a nice subject matter going off into the distance. And we've got the downs disappearing over that way. Now I'm going to have to use a little bit of license and make the field a lot shorter between the two as it's not going to really fit but uh, I don't mind doing that I think it would make for a nice picture at the end of the day so it's great because I've got nothing in front of me I've got swans in the field I'm looking at and I'm looking at pigeons and all sorts flying across and of course right there in front of me and I'll swing the camera around and show you we've got the zoo uh, and right now I'm looking at sort of giraffes walking around the English countryside which is really great I love it um, but uh, yeah so let's get on let's see what happens and hopefully this will bear fruit today we'll see
looking at this and I've just done this sketch and I think this is just too central. So what I'm going to do is move the whole thing over in the painting when I get to do that. So it's just, it's, this is what sketching is about. This is what, you know, doing a sketchbook like this is all about. It's working out all the issues that you may or may not come across and dealing with them in advance so you don't mess up your painting. Um, but that's more the truth. The only way I can alter that is alter my position to where I paint this, which if I walk a little way over, I can probably put this more directly in line with all of this and uh, get a slightly different aspect. It's a little bit awkward, but we'll see. Okay, now I did have a look at this to begin with and I have had a little bit of a lunch, but I've come back and all the time I was having my lunch, I was sort of not quite happy with this arrangement. So, you know, it, another way of doing this is just section off your book, your sketch pad, just to have some idea of what you might want to do. And the first thoughts are that, you know, the way that this sort of comes through the scene, quite low, really, and the hill comes down, so you can have a dark shape for the hill. But then the, the water sort of comes down and out from that position into the corner. But then the way the tree is, I've got one tree right smack in the middle, another one, bigger one here. I think it's going to have to be the compromise. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get set up with some paper, do the sketch, and base it on this one. Okay, everybody, let's get underway. Now I've got a piece of Arsh 300 pound hot press. What I'm first and foremost going to do is plot where I want my uh, horizon lines. I'm going to run it through somewhere like that, I think. So now I'm going to make a few adjustments on here before going any further. I want to take that line out there and this one out here, like that. Okay, so that's cleaned that section up quite nicely. And I want to bring this, a little bit of bank here, then this area here. It is forward, but I want to bring it down like that a little sooner. And then we got to make sure that we've got enough width on our riverbank, like that, to have our water. So it's going to look awful. Nice bit of reflection from that. 
Bring that all the way down through there. A little bump in it around there somewhere and that comes down beside me. So I think we've got this area quite nicely set up. Now, one thing I will say is that the sky here is quite bland right now. It's not really um, hugely interesting. There's some very, very thin, wispy cloud, very indistinguishable, uh, especially sort of from here down. So I don't want to make my sky too bland. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some clouds into that. Now, yesterday here, or around the area, it was absolutely wonderful clouds. So I'm going to um, put in a wash then to begin with, and I'm gonna bring it all the way down through. So I'm gonna put in some nice raw sienna. Nice wash color. Make enough of it. You've got a big piece of paper to cover, but it wants to be quite watery, quite tea-like. bring this all the way down through. In fact, you can increase the value of color so you can make it a little thicker and add a little bit of burnt sienna to that mix. As we come down to the bottom of the field here, we can use that. That adds weight to the bottom of our picture. And I'm gonna be using my neutral tint. And this is the redder version, the um, schminky version, but I don't want it too strong. I want to try and suggest the base of some clouds and that really isn't, as I said just now, much cloud form in the sky today. So I intend to bring in just some shapes, very general shapes. Come in with our sky color. So we're going to use ultramarine blue, that uh, sorry, cobalt blue, and some thalo blue mixed together. And don't forget this has been tinted, so it will have an effect. But let's just come in with some nice sky color. Maybe a tap of blue in there, just underneath there, suggesting some more sky below. Maybe a little bit on this side. That's a bit of a weird shape there that's arisen, so let's get rid of that. just a little bit, I might just beef up. This is when you shouldn't do it. This is when you should stop, take stock. But I'm not, am I? I'm gonna go straight for it. That's quite wet still. I need to come in with a slightly thicker mix and I'm gonna come in with a bit of blue into that, a little bit of cobalt into that mix too. I'm just gonna come in there and just suggest that the cloud is ever so slightly stronger. And hopefully that won't rise to an awful cauliflower running through there. I hope I got away with that.
Right, now then I'm going to warm up this area through here. Neutral tints into the background through there. We have quite a lot of dark coming on over here, but I quite like the warmth. In fact, I want to increase that a little bit more. I want to put a bit of magenta to that mix, just to redden it and make it a little warmer. Some of those green colors, a little stronger would be good. There we go. Don't want it too yellow either. I just want to suggest that we've got some green bases to some of these trees as they go down along that river bank to the far distance there. We can drop in a few shady bits later on. Okay, I'm gonna leave that to dry up a little bit. I want to come in with a very pale yellowish colour. So to that I'm going to use some yellow ochre, but very, very weak. So I'm just going to use some of the red, some of the magenta, and some of the indigo, uh, not the indigo, the neutral tint that I've been using. And then I'm going to come in with some of that yellow ochre, but a touch of blue to it. And I'm going to put that up on the top of my bluffs on the very top of the hill, catching the sun in the afternoon that is almost totally behind me now. But that's the bit of the bluffs that I can see. And I will add some of that yellow, some of the green, some of that yellow. And I want to put in a little bit of warmth on that yellow form into some of this area here. Now it could cause me issues, it may, I may get away with it, but I can probably get away with it by adding some darks into there. I keep looking up every so often, it's just wonderful, all the sounds, apart from the mechanical sounds I hear up on the zoo, but it's just lovely seeing the birds and flying around, hawks, buzzards, um, tons of wood pigeons are feeding. Let's have a green again. Let's have that dirty green look. And I want to suggest that into some of my downs, the downland hills up there. Some green, I'm going to use that turquoise green. I love this color green. A little bit of yellow, and we have definitely got a green. But the green at the back of the field is somewhat cooler to the greens in the front of the field. So ideally, I think I should make a little cooler green like that, and then wipe out one of these, and then just come in with the same mix of green color. So using the ochre, and that lovely turquoise. I think we've got a nice cool color in that red of trees beyond. But there is that significance of the darker trees. Now for that, I'm gonna actually use some indigo, uh, sorry, some Payne's gray, some Payne's gray into that mix. A Little bit of magenta, keeps it nice and cool and a darker violet color. And now I'm just gonna come in here and tap in a few of these darker trees that I can see way down in the distance there. Mm -hmm. 
But I want to come in now and I want to cool some of that colour down. So I'm going to use a little bit of this time raw sienna into that mix. I'm just going to take the strength out of the dark. So here we go. To put our tree line in right on the top there. Right, while I've got this colour on, I'm going to use a little bit of magenta in here and I'm going to add a little bit of the warm neutral tint to that. That's probably a little too red, so I'm going to come in with a little bit of Payne's Grey just to shift it to the cooler colour. And I just want to come in here while I'm thinking of it and putting in the suggested bits of shadow. We're looking good. Um, we haven't done anything to our water. Now it is reflecting a blue sky. Now what colour blue? Well I think mainly cobalt, but I'm going to add into it some ultramarine blue. Just going to make it slightly warmer, but quite weak in colour. So I don't want too much of a strong colour. So let's start looking at our trees and now we're on the last part of the painting. I'm going to come in with some Payne's Grey, but to that Payne's Grey I am going to warm it up with some raw sienna. So we've got this nice sort of colour going on with our tree forms. holding the brush in such a way that I'm using pretty much the belly and tip of the brush to come in and scratch away and create the forms of this tree. Now I need to leave enough light popping through because it's not, as I said, full of leaf. So we've got a lot of sky holes happening. So I'm being very tentative as I come down, suggesting little drags, sideward movements like this. Okay, now I got to come in with a tree that is actually a good deal lighter than the tree behind. This tree here is quite warm quite light, it's catching some sun. I'm going to use some orange, which is, as it is there, way too strong. I use some my Indian yellow, I mix that Indian yellow into that orange. So I've got a very warm colour, but it is a slight bit too watery. So add some more strength to that in pigment form. Now we do have that nice big lump of um, dark color. I'll add some more green, uh, gray to that. Just that, it's got that real sort of um, ivy look to it. A little bit of yellow, and we'll see it into our green again.
Okay, now I've got to work into this area here and I'm trying to make the statement nice and dark, but I want to leave enough suggestion that there are lighter branches from this tree coming into it. So I'm trying to work the negative spaces. Now I'm going to come in with some warm colours because this is all dry. So I'm going to come in with some oranges, some of that green colour, and I'm just going to come down. Now as I do this, I'm going to try and leave a little bit of blue of the water's edge as it goes up through there. That's a little bit of the lovely reflected area. I'm going to bring that all the way down through there, and that really comes right the way across into there. Right, same thing on this side, and we've got our tree to deal with, but why we've got this little bit of lovely ultramarine violet going on with a bit of green, it's kind of a bit grubby. But let's just look at the way that we can create an indication of the shape of the bank. Because what we can do is we can bring that over there, like that, so we're already coming down the river bank, but there's not going to be much of a reflect shadow there but we've got a longer shadow and it then comes down and through the field a little way so you've got a suggestion that we've got this lump which is correct it's there and put in a little bit of dark right at that edge And then, oh, wood pigeons. How could I forget wood pigeons? <laughs> There's a lot of them around. I'm not gonna put a load of wood pigeons in, but what I might just do is a couple of crows that are flying through, maybe two or three here. There you go, one painting painted. Now I'm sorry that the shadows have gone all over the place with this, so it makes it very, very difficult. But I hope you've enjoyed the process. I've had a lot of fun doing it. I know it's probably gone on a little longer than I had intended, but I think I had a lot of fun with it. I've learned something in it, and I'm sure you've got something from it too. Hi everybody, and welcome back to the Painting Channel. Today it's something a little bit, 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 little bit, little bit. <laughs> Here we go. It's not confined to the studio, all these outtakes, I'll tell you. A little bit different. We're going to go back into the van. We're going to do a little bit of artist and, <laughs> and um, something. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the painting channel. Today, it's something a little different. We're going to go out. We've, I've got... Today, it's something a little bit different. We've... We've... Me... And you.
Hi everybody and welcome back to the Painting Channel. Today it's something a little different. Welcome back to the Painting Channel. To channel, to channel, that one. Uh, stop it. Friendly seagulls. So let's roll the intro, let's go out on a plane air adventure together.